three, two, one. Hello, this is Bill Bullard with RCAF USA, the voice of the independent cattle producer in the United States of America. Well, for this segment, I'd like to visit about round three. And to do that, we need to go back in time in the early 2000s. And leading up to the 2000s, we saw year over year increases in U.S. beef exports. And by 2002, at the time, we had near record beef exports. And yet fed cattle prices remain seriously depressed. They were only at about $67 a hundredweight. And then in 2003, early in the year, Canada detected mad cow disease in its native herd. And as a result, export markets started closing their doors. And yet for U.S. cattle producers, they saw cattle prices began to increase significantly. And within five months, the U.S. cattle prices for the first time in history had broke the $100 barrier. And then, and later in the year of 2003, we discovered that we had imported a Canadian cow into the United States with mad cow disease, and 57 markets closed their borders to U.S. beef. Well, the following year, export volumes fell to a 19-year low, and yet cattle prices continued to increase. They jumped $17 a hundredweight from 2002 to 2003. And then they stayed at that higher plateau for years after that. And nevertheless, in 2004, then Secretary of Agriculture Ann Vinneman announced that the United States needed to adopt a mandatory animal identification system because only with such a system, she said, would our export markets remain open in the event of a disease outbreak like what we had brought in from Canada. And so the push was on. From 2005 for many years, the U.S. Department of Agriculture was pushing what was called the National Animal Identification System, requiring mandatory identification of all animals with a preference of electronic identification, requiring producers to register all of their premises where they keep their livestock, requiring producers to actually record the movements of their animals with the federal government. And as the push was on, the ear tag companies jumped on board, and so too did the meat packers and the rest of the beef industry. But cattle producers began to push back. And then by 2010, the pushback was so great that the U.S. Department of Agriculture backed off. And they said, what we will now do is essentially implement a national animal identification system light. And that new system was called Animal Disease Traceability. And rather than to affect all livestock, it would only affect adult cattle and cattle crossing state lines. So a watered down version, which was round two of the National Animal Identification System, was soon implemented by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. But the ear tag companies and the beef packers and all of their allies have continued to work to include a requirement of mandatory animal identification because they view that as the ability to control the live cattle supply chain. Once they could encourage all producers or require all producers to adopt a mandatory animal identification system, then the packers would all know where all the animals are and at what stage of their development they are at. And this is a huge boon to the meat packers. And then if the government is going to require it, the meat packers would no longer be offering any financial incentives to producers to voluntarily participate in such a program on their own. And now we see the Global Roundtable for Sustainable Beef and many of these other global initiatives trying to force the U.S. cattle industry to adopt a mandatory animal identification system. In fact, there's been a group that's been working on that ever since they backed off from the National Animal Identification System, or NAIS. Well, now it's round three. The government is re-upping its efforts to try to force mandatory animal identification system on all producers, and now trying to force the use of the electronic identification ear tag, and in fact, they're throwing money at it. Today, the U.S. Department of Agriculture announced it's going to give a million dollars in grants in cooperating agreements for people to study how beneficial this is going to be. And guess who's on board? It's the ear tag companies and the meat packers and all of their allies that are trying very, very hard to capture the live cattle supply chain 
away from independent cattle producers. Let's keep an eye on this. With that, we're out of time. We hope you have a productive week. Thank you and goodbye.